r slash ask women. Just a human teenager says. What show did you start and wound up hating so much you didn't finish it? Masochist Soup says. Once upon a time. Pam Lock says. Ginny in Georgia. Like I watched season 1 and I liked it. I started watching season 2 and I had enough. I like teenage drama, but I got tired of it. Way too much drama for my liking. The Pity the Pity Baboo says. Switched at birth. Daphne was annoying. I wanted to punch her in the face, so stopped watching after second season. Felt sorry for Bay, who not only got shit from who she thought her parents were, but her B.O. mom didn't even care about her. It was all about Daphne. Rosha267 says. Dark. I started losing interest in season 2 and my boyfriend dragged me kicking and screaming to the series finale. Dog is online says. It's not that I hated it, but I couldn't watch past the first season of Euphoria. I can't even remember if I finished the season, honestly. It just became way, way too much for me. Extremely triggering in so many different areas. Talking Goblin says. Does Grey's Anatomy count? It's still running, but they should have stopped 10 years ago, Imo. Aknagel Rap says. Wednesday. I know everyone loved it, and I tried to give it a fair chance, but Wednesday's snobby and cliche teenage angst made me so irritated. I know I could expect her to go through a character arc, but I was just not having it. Lim underscore frost 534 says. Series of unfortunate events, and haunting of Hill House. I'm sorry one, the first one just got frustrating, because there's no way adults are that. Frick, I'm stupid. I'm one and damn bruh they really jaff about those kids too. Hill House freaked me out, but when the sister turned out to be the bend neck lady I had a panic attack and couldn't finish it. A big old throwaway says. If only I could have said Game of Thrones hera but alas, I finished it and regretted every second of that last season. Giant and Co says. Warrior Nun. Soyboydom says. Outlander. There were some parts of it I really like, but the obsession with corporal punishment and the constant sexual assault scenes eventually became too much for me. I understand wanting to show the hardships of the time, but I should also be able to watch a period piece without being traumatized every episode. Tante Betsy says. Lucifer. After hearing the devil say the same line for the 500th time, I had to quit. Microwave 0 w 0 says. Wednesday. It's so popular but it's so... Cringy? Mookie 843 says. Russian doll. I just can't with her voice. The characters all seemed kind of bland and predictable or token why. I dunno just seemed shit to me. Called it two episodes in lol. Kasparzilla says. Riverdale. I was following the show. Then I wasn't. Honestly same with Pretty Little Liars. Grey Atlas says. Work in moms. I don't think I'm the intended demographic, but I tried and had to shut it off after three episodes. The characters infuriated me. Buzzfeed underscore sucks says. A lot of shows I stop watching after a few episodes, because they just aren't for me. But man, I found New Girl downright insulting. The main character is so annoying, and feels like a man writing his idea of what he thinks a quirky girl is like. Without ever having actually met a real woman before. I know the show was created by a woman, but the main character was just really annoying and inauthentic to me. It's like the trope of writing a perfect woman, but making her clumsy, so that she has at least one flaw that makes her relatable. But turned up to 100. R slash ask women. Ashamed underscore psychology 32 says. How does your relationship with your mother affect your married life? Wrestling woman says. It doesn't. 
IC Organization 338 says. Now, not so much. When she lived with us, extensively. Drunk Enkmeter says. It doesn't. R slash ask women. A little bigger says. Who is the most talented living rapper? Dennis Games and Baking says. Hoff. Tough Collection 7460 says. Eminem. Cat 8844 says. Kendrick or Eminem. Goosequack 99 says. M. Banana underscore booth says. M for sure, he is incredibly talented. Running Pedst says. Kendrick Lammer. R slash ask women. Astfj Kelsey says. How do you stop self-sabotaging yourself? What are your techniques? Sunshine Lao 3 says. Therapy. Mischief Pixie says. Work on being aware of when you're falling into that pattern of thought. Pause. Acknowledge the old habit, acknowledge that it's your brain trying to protect you, speak to yourself with kindness and reframe the thought in a more positive direction. Bunjernet Squash says. I had a therapist tell me once, you have to stop making impulsive decisions. Give yourself a week, before you make any decisions, especially big ones, if you still feel the same way, as when you first decided on it, then carry through. But you have to think about things I didn't like her much I'll be honest, but I keep this advice with me. R slash ask women. Arling4 says. How do you make up when you fight with your friend? Indecisive Apotitao says. We let our heads cool down first before talking. It's hard to converse when your mind is clouded. Ladywood83 says. Start a conversation about something else, and then if you were wrong, apologize. Mraboot Sandbati says. I didn't. She revealed a contempt for me, that was friendship ending. Jatup Kitten says. Most fights I've had in my adult life with a friend, has usually been not worth remedying. More context would be needed to answer, was it benign like how to split a brunch bill or deeper than that? Childhood friend? R slash ask women. Illustrious Coffee 123 says. What do you look for when someone writes you a letter? Gao 8989 says. Words. Raditral bait underscore says. Criminal background. I said Tobafamus 1892 says. My name on the envelope. Mirisalud says. A stamp, so that I can reply. Separate Trash 2375 says. The reason why they couldn't just send an email or text. I love us and witches says. Grammar. What you're talking about says. If it's a nasty letter, yes, I mean you Bonnie, my neighbor, I look for grammar and spelling mistakes. It just makes it all more humorous. R slash ask women. Hadwire Red Testamad says. Women of Reddit, how soon do you start to really miss someone you've started seeing, and like quite a bit? Also, how often do you see the people you are newly dating and really like? hvymtl one says. I can only relate this, based on my own personal experience. My partner, 48 meters, and I, 49f, met in person after two weeks of texting, we met on Bumble, in June 2021. We were supposed to just meet for coffee, but it turned into an almost 6 hour date. He was handsome and funny, and I really liked him. I missed him, after I left the date, and asked him to come to my place for the second date 3 days later. The rest is history and we are still together, but don't live together. I started seeing him about 3 to 5 days per week and still do. I miss him like crazy during those off days. It's really good, that we miss each other.
it keeps things fresh, and reminds us both, that the love and attraction, and longing is still there and very real. When you know you know. Autocaravana says. If I really like someone, I can start to miss them after just a couple of weeks of dating, if we don't see each other for a while. But, sometimes I will casually date someone for ages and then start to get feelings for them later on. So, there's no pattern or rule. If you're asking, because someone you're dating, doesn't miss you yet, then don't worry. Banana underscore booth says. Unless they're a big part of my life I don't really miss anyone especially not someone that I'm only newly seeing. R slash ask women. The dashing Mexican says. What are some things you wished your partner would tell you when they tend to be quiet? Magical underscore healing says. Nothing. I don't want to force them to speak. I know they love me, and people who love you unconditionally would never hold something in that needed to be said. So if it needed to be said, he would have said something. Separate Trash 2375 says. Why he chooses to look at me while he farts loud. Banana underscore booth says. In the moment. Nothing. If he wants to be quiet then he can. He can tell me what's up. If anything, later when he's ready. Celestialism says. In my experience, a lot of times, pointed silence in a relationship means I love you, but I need some time alone right now, to recharge and or process things, and would appreciate, being able to take that time, so I can be all the more present, and loving when we spend time together again. So I would rather they just say that. r slash ask women actual underscore pressure underscore 4346 says what is your favorite pizza fema fatala vibe says roasted red peppers grilled mushrooms artichokes with a spicy tomato sauce pesto no cheese delightful yao new ling quim says pepperoni and pineapple cheek mo underscore 52 says Bacon onion and tomato. Or pepperoni and pineapple. Evening underscore edition underscore 155 says. Margarita pizza, a total classic but delicious. Emilaga says. Pepperoni with extra cheese. I said Toba famous 1892 says. Basil pesto base mozzarella cheese, freshly sliced avocado, semi-dried tomatoes. Topped with pesto aioli, shaved parmesan. It's freak. I'm incredible. Mama Crew 58 says. Hoyan. Adorable Switch Brat says. Pepperoni and spinach. No tomato sauce. Meredith 81 says. Pepperoni and sausage. Tayred 608 says. Pineapple and ham with banana peppers dipped in Hidden Valley Ranch. R slash ask women. Serendipity Canuck says. Women who are in a romantic relationship and also have a platonic relationship, what is it like? Edit, did the platonic relationship start before or after the romantic relationship? At CX says. I mean I think most women have a partner and friend so it just feels normal. Bright Penguin 101 says. I'd say it's a pretty healthy situation, to have platonic relationships outside of your romantic relationship. Cannonball underscore 21 says. Those were some of the most fulfilling relationships I've ever had. The depth of closeness and sharing of vulnerabilities is wonderful. Tough Kitten says. I think it's pretty healthy to maintain and create platonic relationships throughout life, irrespective of romantic attachments. I feel strange about this question. C Red Scallops says. Normal. I have dozens of platonic relationships, most of which started before the romantic one, but some after. Kiorin says. A platonic relationship? Like a friendship? 
I've got platonic relationships with girls I've known since elementary and middle school, long before I started my romantic relationship with my partner. It's fine. It's great. It's pretty common. R slash ask women. Cheese a cake 1972 says. What is a respectful way to tell someone you no longer want to continue texting? Especially if things feel like they are dying off. Is there a way to do this aside from ghosting that remains respectful? Angel Iris says. Being kind but honest. There's no way it's not going to hurt unless they feel like it's dying off too, but it's crueler to leave them hanging or beat around the bush to give them hope. Never Organized says. Just be open and honest. Ghosting sucks, it leaves the person wondering if they did something wrong or if something is wrong with them. Tough Collection 7460 says. I've really enjoyed getting to know each other, but I don't think we are a compatible match for what I'm looking for. I wish you all the best. Short, sweet, to the point. Don't blow smoke up there, but and don't ghost. Somewhere in the middle. R slash ask women. Lil Pumpkin 3 says. Women with IUDs, how has your experience been with a period cup or disc? Look it's Fen says. I tried to switch to the disc from the cup for the end reason, and it was a disaster for me, so I went back to my cup. I'm coming up on 3 years and no problems, I always make sure to break the seal before removing, and I'm extra careful to not pull the strings with pulling it out. Interesting East 750 says. Haven't had a period in 6 years with my IUD. Nelson Aim 56789 says. Didn't need them, the IUD stopped my period. Calesti underscore gold says. Diva cup works just fine, no issues with the Paragard. I've been using one close to a decade. Electronic Crow 9410 says. My IUD stopped my periods. Hooray. I've got two more years until it needs to be replaced. R slash ask women. Winterfern 353 says. How have you been able to tell if you're having a gut feeling about something versus just overthinking? Thelanelion89 says. Overthinking eventually stops rattling around in my brain. The gut feeling stays with me. Vigin Soldier 69 says. I have aphantasia and the inability to think no voices up there. I've identified my gut feeling as feeling sick when I should otherwise be fine. Like an absolute need to get out or I'll throw up. I imagine if I had a thought pattern I'd excuse it as bad food or something similar. Logical underscore Kalev says. I'm a big overthinker. I take my time way pros and cons. But that gut feeling is more of an instant reaction. A feeling that I'll trust 100%. Tech chick underscore somewhere says. Gut feeling for me is a real instant sick feeling in my stomach. You just know. Hannah Hattle says. Gut feeling is an instantaneous, in the moment response, whereas overthinking for me is like lying awake at night thinking about something for hours after the fact. Both are valid, but emo gut feelings are never wrong. I'd trust a gut feeling over something I've internally debated for days or weeks. Teacher Investor says. Gut feelings are pretty instantaneous. Overthinking takes time. R slash ask women. Chrissy we 91 says. Assuming they all paid the same, what job slash career path would you choose? Katrina Shadow Lee says. It's still less about what I'd make, and more about what I'd be qualified for, which is still nothing. I'd be happiest as an editor or a librarian, though. Yellow Blanket 123 says. Pandanani or something incredibly easy. Gamer Girl 07 says. 
Butcher. The only thing stopping me from becoming that is the low F pay plus I can't immigrate to the USW slash that type of pay. Meredith81 says. I'd study medicine and become a physician. Edit, specializing in addition slash substance abuse. My other fun login says. Something involving helping people in need directly. Food bank, shelter, anything of that nature. I could easily spend 40 hours a week doing it and enjoy every minute of it. OK Dragonfruit7120 says. I'd be a flight attendant. Miss underscore freak 440 says. Theoretical physicist. R slash ask women. Wow it's Ebony says. How can you tell if someone changed because they were going through something or if their true colors started showing? London Mist says. Mostly gut instinct or the expression on their faces slash in their eyes. Some Honey 575 says. I would say, if you notice that other people notice a behavior change in that person it may be something they are going through, but if it's just you noticing the behavior change then they were probably always like that, and the true colors are showing. It's not that cut and dry though. Mental illness can come on suddenly at certain ages in life. If you really care about the person the best thing for you to do is talk to the person about your concern and let them know you are available to talk or help them find help. Most time people withdraw because they think it's only happening to them and no one cares or will help so just offering a kind word and help goes a long way. Fema Fatala Vibe says. If they respond to you with empathy and still appear to be a cheerleader in your life, chances are someone is going through something. If they get aggressive, reactive, arrogant, or condescending, run. Their toxic true colors are showing. Random Widow says. I would put forth that it's when people are going through something that their true colors actually show. So pay attention. One underscore with underscore green says. Only time will tell. Note patterns and compare to previous behavior. R slash ask women. 0000001 meow says. How do you know if your partner is checking out other women? What the signs? ETC. Not sure if I'm imagining it. Cheekmo underscore 52 says. Because I see him checking out other women. Looking is pretty innocuous. As long as he's just looking, I don't have a problem with it, and he consequently doesn't feel the need to hide it from me. Blues Point says. Does it matter? It used to make me so jealous and annoyed when I was younger. Now I've realized that we all look to some extent. He's with you for a reason. If he wants to look, don't let it get you down or worry you. If he's being obvious slash creepy, have a quiet word when you get home. To answer the question though, sorry, he'll probably go quiet for a little bit. Maybe check where you're looking, and if he feels like you're looking the other way slash won't notice, he'll follow her with his eyes and swivel his head slowly so as not to draw attention if he's discreet. Sickened Sanity 6 says. If his eyes linger too long on another woman to the point it doesn't feel right and he does a little up and down over the woman with his eyes. Cloud9 Kali says. Just worry if he isn't looking at you. R slash ask women. Main Signature 6 says. Those of you who babysit for money, how do you find babysitting gigs that are safe? Staying in a total stranger's home is not that safe. Lithau Sex says. Obviously people you're close with. Anyone who has a baby just offer. I use the neighborhood app to find people really really close to me. Makes it much easier. Last I work in a daycare. Half the parents are fighting over me for Friday night babysitting. Janine underscore 1469 says. I found that one of the best ways to find safe babysitting gigs is to use a trusted platform such as care.com. They do background checks 
so you can feel confident that the family you're working for is legitimate and safe. Additionally, they offer payment protection, so you know you'll be getting paid what you're owed. You can also look into local services and business networks, where you can get referrals from people you already know and trust. No Muffin 41 says. Ask friends and family for referrals and to look for babysitting jobs listed on websites that have been verified and approved. Additionally, it is important to research the people and families offering babysitting jobs to make sure that they are legitimate and trustworthy. Jerry 40733 says. If you're looking for safe babysitting gigs, I'd recommend starting by asking friends and family if they have any connections who need help. You can also check online listings or local parenting groups to find people who are looking for a reliable babysitter. It's important to always do your research before agreeing to any job so that you can be sure of the safety of the environment and the people you'll be working with. Good luck. r slash ask women. Narromantics1313 says. What three things do you love most about who you are? Sunset and Silence says. 1. I keep my apartment neat and clean. 2. L. I've never been arrested or even given a traffic ticket. 3. I don't have any debt. That's really it. I don't have many good qualities and even coming up with 3 was hard. Mini underscore Daji says. 1. How easy it is to connect to people, I have made great friends at work and college, and it makes me happy to have meaningful relationships with people I care about too. I overall quite like myself 3. Fast learner, I never knew how many interesting things existed that I'm quite good at. Fiendoff Willem says. Intelligence, humor, and great tits. Demonic Girl Cock says. I love that I'm trans I love, that I'm genuine and honest in my connections with others I love, that I've been through a lot of ups and downs in life, that let me relate to other people better. Wise Bad One says. I love that I forgive those who have wronged me, so I can be at peace. I love that I'm passionate in everything I do, and I love, that I make myself accountable for my actions. Mag5788 says. That I'm confident. That I have a positive relationship with myself, because I know what healthy love looks like. That I'm funny. Queet Liffy with her says. That I have boundaries I don't waver on. That I've learned to actually like myself. That I'm finally able to look at tough situations or failure as opportunities for growth, and learning more about myself instead of beating myself up. r slash ask women. Mr. Legend Game says. What type of reassurance do you think people should avoid slash do more? Igat hit by Ahaki Puck says. Any of these were relevant, that you're doing the best you can, when true obviously, don't lie, it's okay not to be okay, things are tough, reaffirming their feelings, telling someone they are good at something. Showing appreciation for what someone does, compliments based on accomplishments for partners. Compliments on appearance. My favorite scouter says. We need more you're doing a great job. I'm proud of you. Lo Kangaroo Kenayan says. Be kind. Opening underscore way for underscore 3952 says. People need to pay attention to themselves, their triggers, and their emotional slash mental bandwidths. If you pay attention to yourself, you'll have a better understanding of who you are, and what you need. Once you have that figured out, you'll know when you may need to take a break from work, or when you need to a sick day. Understanding yourself mentally and emotionally is an ongoing journey, but once you start to realize what need, everything becomes a bit easier. C Red Scallops says. Ask directly. I'm a pretty direct person and even I have to practice. Like hey, honey. I need some reassurance. I'm sane, right? Can I have a hug? And will you make me a cup of coffee? Pink Pixie says. 
Daily affirmations. I did the best I could at the time. R slash ask women. Mariah says. How do you define a healthy and secure relationship? Smitten Mitten 39476 says. Open communication, trust, transparency, loyalty, love, understanding, forgiveness, having fun together. Can't choose Affendum 69 says. Absolutely trust and partnership. I'm husband cheating on me is about as likely to me as the moon crashing into my house. I don't care if he spends time away, sleeps over at a female friend's house, he doesn't, but he could, if he wanted to, and text slash talk to anyone he wants. I feel 100% confident in him and our relationship. Communication is probably the most important. Because we talk about everything, even our insecurities, fears, concerns, ECT, and have the hard talks, there's no room to wonder and no secrecy. I know exactly how he feels, and he knows the same about me, so we are able to make things much easier for one another and always anticipate reactions. We also are partners in everything. He supports me in all my decisions and vice versa, we tell each other, when we think someone is making a mistake or a bad idea, say our piece, and then if the other chooses to proceed when support, and help them 100%, and don't bring up our doubts again. There's nothing we wouldn't do for one another, and whenever I see friends who snoop their spouse's phones, won't allow them to have opposite gender friends, or hate their friends slash cowhawkers, because of their own insecurity it just makes me feel sad for them. Mayor Lord Oration says. A healthy and secure relationship is one that is built on trust, respect, and communication. It is a relationship, where both partners are committed to each other, and their mutual well-being. It also involves understanding each other's needs, setting boundaries, and being honest with each other. A healthy relationship should be based on mutual understanding, support, and compromise. R slash ask women. Basic ad 5630 says. Ladies with panic attacks, how long did it take for things to get better for you? Eretera 7 says. I had panic attacks a lot in my 20s. I'm in my 30s now, and haven't had one in years. I found that meditation practice has helped my overall anxiety by giving me methods to control breathing and focus emotions. In the moment, it can help to have a friend or partner nearby to squeeze a hand and sit until it passes. Pumpkin Princess says. The first time I was able to calm myself it was like I figured out how to do it, and then I just slowly got more and more successful in calming myself. Eventually I got better at recognizing the early warning signs and calming myself down sooner until I was able to prevent them entirely. The trick really is to learn the early warning signs. Tilly Wax says. I had them off and on as a teenager. They really kicked in when I was 21 and didn't calm down until I was about 27. During those years they were frequent and I dealt with a lot of suicidal thoughts and ideation. What really slowed them and made a difference for my anxiety as a whole was removing a major source of stress in my life. My panic attacks stemmed from an entirely different subject matter but once that was gone I was a generally calmer person. They do come sometimes but rarely. Angel Iris says. They didn't. I get them randomly, sometimes years in between them, and there's no obvious trigger for them. Once I got one on my bed, eating lunch and watching cartoons. Snedder 445 says. I still have panic attacks occasionally. However, after being on meds for a few months, they started happening less often. Napkin29 says. They've never really gone away, but therapy has helped me develop tools and strategies to deal with them. R slash ask women. Snoo Drawings 4347 says. What do you do when you feel like a male friend is interested in you? At CX says. A bit awkward. 
I'd have to turn him down, and it'd be worried it would ruin the friendship. Reddish81 says. I start asking him about his love life as a good friend would, and telling him about mine, it has the effect of distancing me from being his target. Unfortunately it usually means the end of the friendship too. Aureus1 says. Still be friends with them, it's their issue. I won't do much, if I'm not interested, it's really not my concern. I don't think I'm leading them on either. Since I don't do anything suggestive. Aureus1 says. Still be friends with them, it's their issue. I won't do much, if I'm not interested, it's really not my concern. I don't think I'm leading them on either. Since I don't do anything suggestive. CyanideCandy13 says. I kinda just continue to be friends with them. I don't have the best judgement on when people are legitimately interested in me, unless they make very obvious flirting attempts. So if I think a friend is interested, I keep it in the back of my mind, but continue to act the same, unless they do come out, and admit to having feelings for me. Aureus1 says. Still be friends with them, it's their issue. I won't do much, if I'm not interested, it's really not my concern. I don't think I'm leading them on either. Since I don't do anything suggestive as. I said Tobafamous 1892 says. Nothing. That's his problem. If he starts making it my problem, then I'll tell him I'm not interested, but if it's just a vibe I'm picking up on, I don't see the need to do anything. R slash ask women. Pinnyplejum99 says. What do you think of leaving job to pursue studies? Busy Nefariousness 108 says. I would always support my wife in pursuing her interests and studies. Stark says. If that's what's better for my future and I have the means to survive for as long as I need to without a job, then cool. Cullens underscore side piece says. I think if you have the money to support yourself, and truly believe you'll finish school, then it'll probably be the best thing for you. However, I've known multiple people in my life who quit their job with the intentions of going to school, and never actually do, so I'm definitely skeptical when someone does it. Joy 2 says. I couldn't do it, I just waited a couple of years after job hunting for higher income. Only when my income was decent to me, I then started pursuing my studies again. This is after I already had my undergrad degree though, since my masters is in progress point him. Doing both work, and pursuing my next degree. It really depends on what you're okay with doing to achieve your goal. Roadmap it. Lazy underscore cartoonist underscore 6400 says. Depends on age and financial status. But if you are capable, and have savings and don't like your career track, then I would be all for it. Grand Salt Queen says. If you have the means and finances to do it, I don't see an issue. Jahuhaya says. That is almost exactly what I did, I dropped my full time, to part time whilst studying. After finishing my degree I'm now earning triple the amount I would have been earning, if I had stayed in that position. R slash ask women. MMC Deer says. How would you feel about dating someone whose previous partner went missing? Canary Outrageous 583 says. I went missing from my ex for months he wasn't a bad guy. Smutneys Malik says. Depends on the circumstances. If there's even slim chance they did it, then nope. Otherwise I'm in. Fiendorf Willem says. Let's assume I had nothing to do with her disappearance. Nevert really says. Depends on the circumstances surrounding that disappearance, and how they are handling the situation. Sensitive Rock 85 says. Hard pass for me. Either he had something to do with it, or he didn't, and she could be found at any point. Brince says. No PE, watch too much true crime. Sad Sledgermain says. 
that would depend entirely on the circumstances surrounding their missing ex. And, if nothing seemed off there, how they'd handled their own trauma, and if they'd been able to let them go and move on in life. Banana underscore booth says. Depends on the circumstances of the disappearance, I feel they'd been investigated, and cleared then I might consider it. Random Times says. Depend on the circumstances. Miss underscore cafe underscore au underscore 8 says. I have a lot of questions, but I'm not sure I were to risk my own safety to find the answers. R slash ask women. Hull underscore conversation 41 says. How do you handle finally realizing that you were the toxic one in your relationship post breakup? Pale click says. The reason I ended the last situation I was in was because I could see I was toxic I didn't want to hurt him. Honestly though, I've been to therapy since that's healed me, so I'm hopefully aware can be better in future relationships. C Red Scallops says. I forgive myself. I heal my old traumas. I do better when I know better. Minty underscore dinosaur says. Reflect on it, try to find out why I acted the way I did, how I cold handled the situation instead, and early signs of the behavioral pattern, so I can avoid making the same mistakes early on. It's a process. You're trying and actively learning. Don't be too harsh on yourself. Ellie Aurora says. Reflecting, learning from it, and seeking professional support if required. In my opinion you can't necessarily undo what you did, but you can change for future relationships. Or see idiot 229 says. I think there is different levels of toxic, egg. You can be toxic to someone, but that does not mean you are a toxic person, it just means you are toxic to them. But it is a learning opportunity such as I'm not good for someone with this traits as it clashes with my personality traits of this. For example there is a fine line between pushing someone to be more outgoing and helping them overcome some shyer aspects of their personality so they don't miss out on experiences and then you can push it too far and actually make them constantly uncomfortable, hence when it becomes toxic. There is of course openly toxic traits such as being selfish, abusive etc but deeming something toxic can be about perspective. Diet Dr. Pibb says. By not beating yourself up, learning from your mistakes, and making a purposeful effort to be a better partner next go around. R slash ask women. Vamps1s says. What made you realize a close friend was jealous of you? Astronomy Louver says. Found out they was talking behind my back and didn't even want to talk to me for no reason but became the most upset when I asked them why they were acting like this and I said I was no longer going to be their friend. We almost got into a fight, I'm glad I became the bigger person and walked away. Not worth it. Some of the people they hung around with were jealous of me. Just a result of someone hanging around the wrong crowd. It hurt a lot, but I'm glad I dodged a bullet and hope they're doing okay in life. Emojika 997 says. She couldn't just be happy for me, and always place more emphasis on her achievements, as well as her problems. Stona Cold Fox says. She'd copy things I do slash buy and belittle my accomplishments during our friendship. It became abundantly clear when we stopped being friends, and she made a whole post on Instagram about it. I can't even express how much happier I'm for her to be out of my life. Avocado Mysterious 732 says. When you hesitate to share your good news with them, that's when you know your friendship isn't real. I have dealt with a lot of friend situations, when I get some good news, they weren't happy at all, and when I told them about the difficulties I have been facing, I could see the satisfaction on their faces when they see me suffering. 0 underscore 0 moon 0 underscore 0 says. We would go shopping, and she would not like anything I liked. A week later, I'd find out she bought the things I showed her. Reddish 81 says. 
Every time something good happened, she couldn't hide her issue with it. In the end, something particularly amazing happened, and she couldn't even bring herself to mention it. I took that opportunity to end the friendship. When I looked back, I realized she'd been secretly competing with me on everything from body weight to income to boyfriends and vacations. r slash ask women. Reckless Dimwit says. What's a visible habit you notice in someone who grew more matured from the last time you met, say a few months to a few years? Abra Nerni says. To be honest. They are a little more boring. Maturing is great, but sometimes I miss my friends from, before they had children, talked in plural, we instead of I, and asked reasonable pre-scripted questions, how's job? Instead of what would you rather be, a vampire or a werewolf? Mirakumi says. They are more patent and they well, they tend to be more reliable and trustworthy. Someone I can really look up to. Lunatic underscore Sailor Moon says. They are more cooperative in spending time with me and less demanding of their needs. Celestialism says. In men specifically, one thing I notice is that a lot of mature guys are better listeners and better at one, not interrupting me and or two, apologizing and asking me to continue what I was saying if they do interrupt me. Probably long comment says. More reasonable opinions, which are better supported. Immature people tend to have a lot of extremist opinions, and these tend to have a you're evil slash terrible slash stupid, if you disagree component attached to them. Some extreme opinions are justified, but immature people usually can't see anything, except as black and white, and are unwilling to accept new information or contrary evidence. Monsieur Tobin says. My husband. From when I first met him till now, he was a bit passive aggressive, just bottled stuff up and never wanted to talk about the issue until he exploded. We are finally at the point where he can just tell me the issue he's having and we talk it out. Huge growth, love to see it. Snoodonuts231 says. They start taking responsibility for their own actions and they respect time. They are not just lounging around doing nothing, they are making their own life, by working or going to school. r slash ask women. Arling4 says. How do you, when you don't want to study? Walnut with teeth says. I'm a long way past having to study for anything at this point in my life. If I have a work task that has been staring me in the face, and has been sitting in my inbox for a while, I find that putting on music helps me focus. Something for one part of my brain, to mellow to while the other part focuses on the dull task. Relative Web 2737 says. 1. Think of my dad's hardship, just to send me to a prestigious university. 2. Finish all the task, so I could sleep well later, and hang out without stress. Alhazard33 says. Improvisation. Jonah says. I just don't lol. Vanth Guide says. Set a timer for 10 minutes. Sit down and tell myself I only need to do 10 minutes of work. Then if I find a groove, I keep going. If not, I quit after 10 minutes, do something else for a while, and come back later with another 10 minute timer. If I'm working on a paper, I don't start at the beginning. I'll write a paragraph or two for the middle, get down the parts, that are best formed in my mind. The opening and closing paragraphs are typically the last things I write. Kalathia Pilia says. I had a burnout from a bunch of different things happening whilst I was writing my MA thesis, and ever since then my steps are usually as follows. 1. Feel really guilty too. Procrastinate 3. Feel even worse 4. Realize I still have to study regardless 5. Procrastinate some more 6. Get so stressed that I'm not able to make dinner 7. Cry 8. Finally get started the day before the deadline needless to say this isn't the best way to go about studying, and I'm glad that I'm almost done. 
I managed to ask for help from my professor with my previous paper. That was the way to go for me. She got me a place at the faculty to study, and I managed to work there without too much crying going on. So yeah, get some help would be my advice. Don't make my mistakes. R slash ask women. Ghost Eagle says. For those of you who have seen the boys, what do you think about Starlight? No spoilers please. Prismatic Watermelon says. I actually really like her. She's tough but has her own weaknesses, and she has a backstory that a lot of women can relate to re her family slash upbringing, no spoilers. PLS Watch Earthlings it says. I like her. I'm not sure I would describe any one character in the show as my favorite, but she's probably the closest. Stress and Screaming says. She is a good character. I like her resolve. Helena Machiavelli says. I like her a lot. She's badass and knows her worth. I admire her bravery and her sense of justice. Agent Aspert says. She's kind of annoying at times, but she becomes really badass. She is also pretty flawed, and does dumb shit on occasion, which I think, saves her from the Mary Sue trope, that a lot of characters like her fall victim to- I like Meve more than her though. You'll see why. Keep watching the show. It's so good. Drunk Enklitter says. I didn't really like her the first season, but she's grown on me. Third season Starlight is pretty solid. Sister underscore Winter says. I stopped watching the show after season 2, but she was literally the only character I liked Lmao. I didn't buy she would ever go for a loser like Yui though. R slash ask women. Virasai off the sea says. How do you feel about dissolved relationships, where the person you knew? is no longer someone you recognize from before. DuxGerald07 says. It still sucks but it happens for a reason they can't be there, so I guess it needed to happen. and but he says. Had this happen with my best friend of 20 years. It was very sudden and unexpected, that realization that she had completely changed. Her values and personality now are almost opposite to what they were, and Sgler has nothing but contempt for people like me now, ironically how she used to be too. I felt heartbroken for months. But now I just accept it. She's allowed to change, and I'm allowed to remove myself from a friendship, if I'm not being treated with respect. Shings11 says. Nothing, unless they're exhibiting behavior that is potentially harmful to themselves and others. People are constantly evolving, it's often a good thing. Frick Hope signed me says. Honestly, it depends. Sometimes it's bittersweet, because who they've become isn't really a bad person, just no longer right for me. Sometimes it's grating, because who they've become is substantially worse in some way than who they were before. Onakut says. I create distant and refocus energy elsewhere. I don't need to think much about them, so I redirect my energy when I catch myself. Flavortown Abbey says. When I start to grow apart from a friend, I do tend to ask myself whether I myself have changed, in addition to or instead of the other person changing. I've definitely seen old friends in a new light as I've grow older and move through different phases of life. Edit, and growing apart is definitely not necessarily a bad or shameful thing. I had a boss who told me some people are there for a reason, some for a season, and some for a lifetime. No need to put pressure on yourself to maintain something that just isn't working. An underscore ok underscore egg says. I'm happy they aren't a thing in my life anymore. R slash ask women. Rainy Day Birdie says. What's your favorite angsty song? Joe I by Concrete Blunt Daniel by Bat 4 Lashes Maps by Yeah Yeah Yeahs. Avalanche Returns says. 24 frames, Jason Iceball. 
I have a hit says. Anything, anything by Dramerima. Karigo underscore Ichisaki says. Too sensitive by Scene Kennedy. Cat8844 says. Paranoid Android. Aumi Uwu says. I break by Catatonia. Indigo Rose 2022 says. Imaginary by Evanescence. Diesel86523 says. Troubled by Cage the Elephants. Acceptable Lemon 637 says. Hey Google Play Fire or Apple. Acceptable Lemon 637 says. Lucinda Williams change the locks. My favorite Scouter says. Welcome to the Black Parade, my chemical romance. Katrina Shadow Lee says. Easier to run, Linkin Park. Wiffy 1185 says. Currently pages by White Reaper. Pauline Mermaid says. Dark Side Cowboys, Dust, from the Apocryphal, no other version, I just realized they were resident it. Gcroc84 says. TSR. Against me. Survivalism, min. Apprehensive underscore isk 447 says. When it rains by Paramore. Sunshine Lao 3 says. Fake plastic trees by Radiohead. R slash ask women. Would you boy says. What makes you lose interest after a good first date? Lose N0 Tloss says. If they don't tighten up their act when we're together. Minty underscore dinosaur says. Inconsistency. Short replies. No effort. I had an awesome first date somewhat recently, but he didn't really make an effort to keep in touch, didn't reply much and so on. I'm not doing that anymore. Anxia Wilson Adolescent says. The next time I saw him, but not a date, wouldn't stop trying to push me towards having sex, when I said I wasn't ready to take that step. Pastusa name says. Racism in solatitude entitled behavior toxic behavior overall. Demonic girl cock says. Bad for low up texts where they reveal toxic behavior. R slash ask women. Tiny Onion 1074 says. What was it like movie to a new city all by yourself, knowing no one? Mraboot Sandbati says. The first two times I did it, I moved to cities that were much bigger than my home city, and it was exciting. Exhausting but exciting. The third time I moved to a smaller place and that didn't go so well. I'm not really a small town person. Throw it or AI 1,234,567 says. Liberating. Cat in box or not says. I've done this several times and I love it. Shiny new start. So many options. Getting out and about, and getting to know a new place enables me to get to know new people too. Win win. Fun underscore honeydew 129 says. I moved June 2019, after losing my cousin whom I was so close to, and breaking off an engagement. Got into my new job, and was excited then had a manager who just didn't like me for I don't give a, frick, reason and tried to have me fired. Long story short covered hit, was going through it, and had to sit in my pain, and it was depressing, but the most liberating feeling I ever had. A blessing in disguise. I learned then. That things happen for us, and not to us. The person I was, is nothing like who I'm now. Babe125 says. My immediate experience was terrifying, I even felt boxed in. I had a routine of going to work and returning home. I was so homesick. Even after work I didn't know the place or places, where I could retreat to, to simply exhale, debrief. Enjoy nature, even though I was by myself. Humiliating myself says. For me, horrifying and amazing. Everyone told me not to do it, but I was really cramped, and sad in my small town. 
I hated having to find a place to live with no relatives or friends or support. I had to go through Craigslist and move into someone's bedroom, it took a while to find stability. Once I did, I realized I loved the city, I loved little things like not being asked how my sister is every time I have to buy a coffee. The ups man not asking me how school was going. Not having people to gossip about me because they had nothing better to do. I even really liked my job and didn't care that the pay was low. Honestly, it's 10 tenths, would recommend, but I'd say, if you do it, be safe about it, get pepper spray if it is legal, get friends or family, to help you move if you can, only meet strangers in public, and always update friends about where you are going, and who you are meeting, if you meet a stranger for anything. That's all for this video. Was it good? I know not for I'm a robot. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. This video is the product of an automated process.